I don't agree with piracy um, of our CDs on, um, on our own homeland. Well, first of all, those bootleggers don't know, you know, all the hard work that you put into making something that comes from the heart, you know. A lot of work goes into recording an album. But what we would really like to see out of our interview, and I'm sure others have been interviewed, present this to the Navajo Nation Council, and hopefully something gets passed. That's enough. Yeah, that's enough. I'll touch the camera. Yeah, yeah I will touch the camera. Touch the camera. Touch the camera. Flabbergasted? Yeah, I'm sad. Astonished by it? Just flabbergasted? No, I'm thinking about a lot of the other natives who are the actors. You know, they work hard. Oh, you're that cat that's all paranoid about your video, aren't you? Not just mine. Everybody else is no, too. No, you're not. You're interested in yours. Everybody you're else is as everybody too. else. Are you starting trouble? No. Don't get into it with this guy, okay? Just forget this guy. I'm not worried about any of these fuckers. You know why I'm not worried? Why? I don't even have to tell you why I'm not fucking worried. You know, wouldn't it be right if you just walked into a CD store and just took a CD off of the shelf and then just walked out? You know, that would be shoplifting, you know? Um, and there are laws against that. Um, of course, the, you know, it's different when you're on the Navajo Nation because at this point, to my understanding, there's no law against piracy on the Navajo Nation. I mean, I'm trying to do things the honest way. I'm trying to make a ends meet at home. And it really made our sales suffer. It's so readily available, you know, that it's, you really don't really stop and think, you know, where it really truly is coming from. Everybody, I should say, everybody has that choice of who do you want to support? Do you want to support the artist or do you want to support the person who's ripping off the artist? But what doesn't help is when they do the piracy on the CDs and we lose money. And it also really hurts the artists because with our company, we give them royalties. You know, we want to continue to make more of our product, more music, and be able to put it out there for more people to enjoy. We have to speak up as artists. We just can't say, well, just let them sell it. Let them make a living off of it. The values that have been instilled is that is wrong. You're stealing from somebody else. You're making a living off of somebody else. You know, coming from a, a band of four here, you sacrifice your lives to make something like this happen. The money that's spent, you know, the the time you have away from family, the sacrifice, like I said, you know, and you know, it takes a lot to make this happen. And you know, when we put a CD on our music's out there, you know, we, you know, we want to know that we we have that right of a, a success out of it. You know, the you know the the comfort of you know we've earned the respect from the people, you know, that buy our music. You know, and when someone goes and burns our music like that, you know, it's just like. It's taking a piece of us, it's like, you know, that's like a waste, you know. You know, but if people are going to make, make, um, burn a bunch of CDs and then uh, go out and sell them, I don't think that's fair to any artist. Um, it's, people have to understand that we're artists and because we're artists that means that we make less money than sheep herders do, you know, and it's like, <laughs> we fund all this ourselves and, you know, um, and it's what, it's kind of our means, you know, that's our, um, how we sustain ourselves just as, as somebody um, weaves a rug and, and goes out to sell that. Um, you know, we're, we're the same way. It's, we're just making a CD and we're, we're, we're selling it, you know, in hopes that people will help to support us. And this is an art, even though it might be comedy, it might be music, it, it, whatever the case may be, it's still an art form. We don't have the means that when our elders told us to go out and make a living for yourself. On the integral day, don't need. 
those are the teachings that we need to listen to. And they, they, they point the finger at us. Our elders tell us that you are the one that's going to do it for yourself. Nobody else is going to make it happen. And that's the one thing that, that I want to make happen for myself and for my family, for my people, is to let these people know that, hey, you're not only stealing from, from the artisans out there, but you're stealing from the very blessing that you've been given. Basically, you know, they're just blatantly just ripping people off, you know, by taking a product and selling what is not actually theirs and basically just pocketing the money right there without, without any consideration to the artist whatsoever. There's also a difference between um, independent artists, people who are, you know, completely creating their content, who are investing all their money, sometimes really hard-earned money, sometimes they might have a few jobs, and they still take the time to struggle, you know, as a band, or as a filmmaker, or as anybody who's producing something like that, your art, you know, you really, you know, do this, you know, hopefully from the heart, and everybody, especially if you're sacrificing that much to try to produce a CD, I think that a lot of people take for granted how hard it is to put something like that together, especially if you want to make good audio quality, good sound quality, and you put it together, your hard um, work into something like that, and then to have that, um, you know, just, you know, looked at by somebody else saying, oh, hey, you know, thanks for putting that out there, I can take that and sell that, and, you know, you don't get a cut out of it, it doesn't go into your financial, you know, management plan in relation to how you think you could maybe produce thousand CDs, you need to sell this many to make a return in order to just maybe put it out there or pay for the cost of just making the CDs for yourself. You know, I think that a lot of independent bands aren't like greedy corporations that want to just make a lot huge profit for themselves. They actually just want to create. And in order to create, you need to pay for a part of that process, at least, unless you get the recording services for free or donated. Um, but, you know, I mean, everything to some degree, you know, has a price. It's, it's, it's not our way of life, you know, to take. And you're basically stealing. <laughs> is what it is. You are stealing. You're stealing from people who have worked very hard, you know, to see that whatever comes from their heart is heard from other people. And we need to remember that stealing is not our way of life. My uncle, Herman Cody, he is the, the composer of the majority of the songs that I sing. And with what songs I have written and composed, a lot of work goes into it. A lot of thought goes into these songs. And you know, these songs come from the heart. You know, these songs are songs that, you know, that mean a lot to him, to myself, and me being the instrument to express that to people, you know, and to share that with people. It's a lot of work, you know, and with this pirating that's taking place, you know, on our reservation, it's not right, first of all. It's, it's a federal offense, and I don't understand why our tribe, you know, our government, has not taken it serious enough, you know, to put a law in place, you know, to protect its artists. You know, put into perspective what somebody from that older generation would be, you know, is not going to go out and spend, you know, a whole half a lifetime herding sheep and raising this, you know, huge flock of sheep. And then somebody else coming in and reaping the rewards by, you know, taking all the wool and selling it for themselves, whereas the sheep herder is one that, you know, he's the guy that was out there, you know, looking for his sheep, you know, getting the water for his sheep. You know, he did all that hard work, yet somebody's can, you know, collect on his sheep and on the wool on it, you know. It's basically the same thing. We have to say something, we have to do something. We hold those sacred because those are very, very talent that's been given to us by the Creator. And we have to protect those things. Just like we have to protect our songs. We have to protect the way we dress, the way we look. Those things, if we saw somebody else steal those things, man, we would say something about it. 
Dolto's eight. Matt's all eating no jaw right there. They're gonna say, let's go, let's go get our stuff back right now. Right now, there is a federal law about copywriting, then the piracy issues. There is a federal law that prohibits that. Every CD or movie that you would buy from a retailer, it states on there. This is protected by federal law. And just what the Navajo Nation should do is pass tribal laws to prohibit counterfeiting, piracy. And from the beginning, we would try to talk with Navajo Nation police officers. And from the beginning, they would try to help you. Maybe for a day, they'll tell the illegal sellers to leave the premises. And sometimes I feel like we become a nuisance to the officers. To have it recopied, it, it's, it's hard to handle. It's hard to take in. And when you talk with officers repeatedly about the same old issues, it's like they don't even want to. They already know when you're going to them. They say, I'm not handling that. You have to go to the, the main office or the police, the headquarters or whatever they call it. But that's how, that's how I feel sometimes when I go out. Piracy is a serious affair. It may not seem like much, and you may like being able to get something cheap, but it affects the amount of new material that comes out, new movies or new CDs. It affects tribal members who make something. If they don't sell enough, they don't make back their investment. And if they don't make back their investment, they can't afford to make a new movie. A band or an individual cannot afford to make a new CD if they don't sell enough of their old one. Uh, for the labels that put things out, if they don't sell enough, they decide that group isn't popular and don't make another recording by that group. So almost it affects tribal members by who produce things, who are artists, by them not having income, and it affects the general population by limiting the choice they have in new recordings. You know, since we started this business, we have, and we've seen it, you know, we've experienced it, we've caught people selling some of our stuff, and it makes it really hard. And when we don't make enough, our end loses, and then the artists lose money too. And We've been in business here at this location for over a year and four months now. And just from comparing when you first release a CD, you do real good the first day, but you kind of notice that it starts declining because you already know somebody already has that CD the next day and they're selling it somewhere else for $5. And we hear it from people that we know, people that we work with, and it's hard. The legislation that um, I'm sponsoring is a pirating act on the um, Navajo Reservation. Uh, I, I see it as, as a problem with our, our musicians and our artists who are trying to uh, make a living off of uh, their production, their creation, and yet individuals that have to sell their records for their gain and not giving any credit to the main owners. That draws a problem. So, um, so that uh, draws me to, to the atten attention of sponsoring this legislation. And being a music artist myself, I, I, I strongly support our artists out there as well. So I've seen individuals that sell other artists' uh, productions. Um, an example, uh, you know, at a local restaurant in Gallup, uh, I've seen uh, individuals selling uh, James and Ernie CDs and, um, and without the permission of, of, of the artists for their own gain. So I've, I've seen the flea markets with um, you know, individuals selling other artists' is, uh, records, CDs. You know, this also reflects the uh, traditional music that we also carry. And I know we have a lot of our delegates that uh, participate in our, in our traditional music. It's our, it's our music and we, we need to protect it with if all beings, especially if we are the uh, maker of that music. But you know, going to our delegates, uh, informing our delegates um, how much work it took to actually produce this record, how much work and time 
that, that the artists have put in and, and trying to get it out and, and, and some of our artists make a living off of this and, and just trying to describe it in that fashion toward them. Um, we all have jobs um, and, and we got to look at it that way. Um, musicians out there, this is their job, their livelihood as well. So we got to look at it in that perspective. We have livestock owners, they got to take care of their flock and, and as music artists this is the same way. And as far as um, business owners, on that perspective, like a video store owner that's trying to make a living off by, by renting out movies, if you will, and to have a pirating individual who's committing pirating, uh, there's a big difference there. Um, as a business owner who has a video store, did the proper procedures in getting a business license, uh, taking the right steps and yet there's an individual off the streets that comes and sells off the, the streets and 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 make more money than the, the legal business owner. It's it's just not right. So I'm fully in support and I hope our delegates are and I hope that our music artists as well also be behind us in supporting this legislation. Well it's not only just the artists that affects our economy too as well. We have a number of businesses that rent videos and we have movie theaters here too. And when you have these DVD bootleggers out there selling these movies, the rental places aren't going to rent any movies, they're not going to sell any movies, and the movie theaters aren't going to sell any tickets. You know, and that's a loss of income, that's a loss of tax revenue that goes to the Navajo Nation. And in turn, the business suffers too. And some of these video rental places have had to close because these bootleggers have set up shop right there in front of their store and they've run them out of business. And the people that work there are unemployed now because of that, you know, and, and it's not right, you know, it affects our community, it affects everything, it's a whole domino effect, you know, it's a multi-million dollar industry here on the Navajo Nation, and a lot of people don't understand that, you know, the average bootlegger makes about 200 bucks an hour, there's an eight hour day, that equals $1,600 a day, there's an average of 12 bootleggers at a flea market, you multiply that, that's $19,200 a day, and to pirating sales and DVD sales alone. And then there's like four major flea markets on the Navajo Nation. You know, you got Shiprock, Gallup, Chin Lee, and Tuba City. You multiply that, 19,200, that comes up to $76,800. Then on top of that, there's 52 weeks out of the year. You multiply that, that's $3.9 million just in DVD sales alone. This doesn't even include audio CDs. And that's all tax free. And none of those royalties go to the artists. And that's how big it is. And we've been getting phone calls and emails and mail from the post office from people all over the place that say, you know, we've seen your movie over here and they're selling other people's movies and DVDs and CDs here and there. And we even had one person mail a letter from Delcon saying they got, they even sent a copy of Milepost 398 to us and they said they got it from the trading post over there and that those people at the trading post are bootlegging DVDs there. You know, so it's not only happening in the flea market, some of these stores are actually doing it themselves. And these aren't Navajos, these are Anglo people, Anglo run stores. You know, and to do that, that's a federal offense. You know, we've also had even threats on our lives too because of what we're doing. We've had phone calls, people telling them, we're going to kill you for what you're doing. You know, we're over in the flea market too, over in here in Kienta. I had saw these bootleggers and I kindly asked them to leave and they gave me all kinds of heat and threatened to kill me. They knew where I lived and they said, I know where you live, we're going to kill you. And I wound up having to call the police and they got arrested right there on the spot. And so a lot of these people are really upset about what we're doing. And when we approach them, when we went out and we're making this film, we're approaching them and saying, a lot of them say, oh, we're not, we're not bootlegging your movie. We don't bootleg native stuff, you know, but yet you see smoke signals and black cloud and all that stuff. And those are still native films. Those are still independent films. You know, and we as native artists have come a long way to get where we're at in, in, in the entertainment industry, you know, and these people aren't helping us any bit, not one bit. It's not Navajo way to go out there and take something that's not yours and make money off of it or taught to you know, take care of yourself, your family, do it right, do it honestly, do it with integrity, work hard, good things will come to you. Not just take it and steal it. It's no different than somebody breaking into your house and stealing everything you worked so hard for your whole life and selling it at the flea market. 
and the police just sit there and do absolutely nothing about it and say, there's no law against it, sorry. I just hope our leaders take a really good look at this and realize that the, the problems it's causing, not just for the artists, but as well as economically and morally, what kind of message does that send out to our kids? That it's okay to steal? No, it's not. That's not how we raise our children. That's not how we are as a people. We're not that way. We're not supposed to be that way. And many of these people say, this is how I support my family. This is how I make ends meet. You know, that's not the right thing to do. You have to work hard. For anything you want in life, you have to work hard. Nothing is just given to you on a silver platter. What kind of pride would you have in saying that, oh, I make my living bootlegging DVDs? You know, how can you hold your head up high and be proud about that? It's no different than asking somebody who bootlegs alcohol on the Navajo Nation to our people. You know, how do you make your money? Oh, I bootleg alcohol. I ruin people's lives. I ruin people's families. I cause a lot of the problems on the Navajo Nation. I mean, what kind of pride can you hold in that? This is still no different than that. You know, I can ask our leaders just to help us. They're the leaders of our people. They're the leaders of our nation here. And I hope everybody that watches this really takes a good hard look at this and makes the right decision to put this law into place and end this problem right here and now. We voted you in there and now we're making a cry for help right now. Help us.